Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the first broadcast of the year. My name is Mary Beth Iron. I want to take this opportunity to thank you all very much for attending this segment of our webinar series that were presented by Sergio Mauri of Fedigari. We're going to dissect a recent project that was done by Fedigari, which includes a complete integrated solution for manufacturing of sterile powder antibiotics. The stream, unfortunately, is not at our usual time frame just because of the time difference. Usually it's at 11.45, so it's a bit uh, earlier for everybody. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll have some other people that'll jump on later since it's a little too early to do it live. But um, we do uh, have some live people watching. So to get a little housekeeping out of the way, the stream is broadcast on our YouTube channel. For the best best viewing experience, we recommend you watch it in full screen mode, which can be accessed via the rectangular icon in the lower right corner. If you want to leave a comment or ask something, please address the live chat sidebar, which is down on the right-hand side of the video feed in the normal uh, YouTube feed. If you're watching in the full screen mode or on your smartphone, uh, hit tablet, escape, or rotate your device to the portrait mode for smartphones and enter any questions or comments in the live chat box that you would like to be reviewed for discussion, and we'll get to those later on in the segment. So unfortunately, also many older browsers and window XP machines, they don't support the live stream encoding anymore. So if you get that message when you uh, link up, then you won't be able to view it live. You can save the link, and as soon as we're done doing the live feed, then you can come back on and get onto the recorded session. So, um, you know, we'll, so the live session is, uh, going on now. So certainly if you feel any of your associates would benefit from the content delivered, please don't hesitate to share this link with anybody. And also if there's any additional information or technical services that my company can provide related to this or any other equipment we represent, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. So um, as we mentioned before, Light Scientific specializes in the representation of pharmaceutical production equipment largely for parental applications. We're based out of St. Louis, Missouri, with offices and project engineers additionally located in Illinois and Minnesota. From aseptic environments through container integrity testing, our company has been involved in over 5,000 equipment projects throughout the Midwest. Detailed information can be found on our website. So um, I am going to, I guess, turn this over now to Sergio, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the webinar and Fedigari. Okay, thank you, Mary Beth, for uh, your kind uh, introduction. So first of all, uh, I would like to bring you a cup of coffee from Italy as you are in breakfast time, but unfortunately, oh, the technology... The coffee there is so good. <laughs> technology doesn't allow now this uh, very interesting uh, uh, system to transfer system of material anyway uh, today we are going to talk uh, of um, a project that we recently delivered to a quite important customer that unfortunately I cannot share with you but anyway uh, he uh, we got the permission uh, to share uh, uh, what uh, was the design of the system um, the, um, this case study is relevant uh, to, um, um, to a, um, a, a solution that uh, integrates uh, several technologies. Uh, um, most of, many of them are uh, pedigree proprietary. And um, so le let's go uh, further and uh, start to enter in more details. So the scope of the project is uh, to dose uh, uh, sterile antibiotic powder into uh, clean and sterile aluminum kegs. So as uh, according to the risk assessment uh, of pharmaceutical process, first of all, you need uh, to define uh, what is the OEL of this powder and the OEL occupational exposure level of this powder uh, is in the range of 65 micrograms per meter cube. Therefore, we are uh, in an uh, occupational exposure band uh, of uh, three, and uh, we have designed um, our uh, system uh, providing a containment perfor performance target of 25 micrograms per meter cube. It is not a very uh, tight uh, system because of uh, the OEL of the product, so we don't need uh, to, um, uh, um, to over-design uh, the, the overall system. There are several other uh, solutions that can be 
um, designed uh, with the isolator and also we did some project uh, uh, together with the isolator but anyway this is a very quite um, interesting project with the integration uh, with the uh, RAPS restricted access barrier system um, on the right side, uh, you can um, have uh, an idea of uh, the, the pyramid uh, of the containment strategy uh, triangle. On the top, uh, we have uh, the isolator technology and going down, we, we go down to the downflow booth uh, plus uh, wraps or a screen uh, to make a physical, um, physical separation between uh, the operator and the product. Then we have a simple downflow booth uh, uh, providing a protection between uh, 100 and 1,000 micrograms per meter cube. Uh, in case of less uh, uh, dangerous product, you can uh, even uh, have just an horizontal flow booth uh, with an airstream taking away from the operator uh, the powder. And uh, we can move uh, to less sophisticated uh, uh, solution with the local exhaust ventilation and and then at the end, uh, we can make some uh, containment even with the centralized HVAC system by uh, establishing a good uh, um, a good uh, gradient of pressure uh, between the rooms. So the the containment uh, room has to be uh, to be in a negative pressure against uh, the other rooms in order to contain all the product uh, generated, the powder, the dustiness generated within the room. So the containment classification is based uh, on different uh, factors. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, you have to define what is the toxicity of the product. So we have uh, with all products uh, that ha has, uh, uh, have a, a, a potency uh, of less than y the one uh, milligram per day is highly toxic. And then uh, we have this scale up to more than 100 uh, milligram per day that is uh, non-toxic. Day means uh, one, one working shift, so eight hours. Uh, then uh, uh, in the middle, we have the OEL, the occupational exposure level, that is defined in um, micrograms per meter cube. And um, to define the OEL, uh, you, uh, you can make some calculation. But also you can um, you can uh, find in the literature in the, the web, for instance, there are thousands of OEL for uh, each different uh, kind of uh, material. But sometimes, especially when you have a mix, then uh, you have to make a calculation of the occupational exposure level, and then there are some uh, some uh, formula that helps you to uh, to make the, this evaluation. And according to the OEL and the toxicity of the product, uh, then you can um, uh, make a, a choice of the technology of containment. So the isolation technology, downflow boost technology, segregation, uh, uh, local exhaust, and, uh, and also um, uh, centralized HVAC uh, system. I want... Um, I, I know that most of you uh, knows what uh, is the difference between isolator and wraps, uh, but just uh, this slide just to remind you. So the um, first of all, wraps means a restricted access barrier system. So um, in reality, a wraps is uh, uh, what uh, I call an enhanced clean room, still a clean room. In fact, the the wraps especially if uh, the, the RAPS is for a septic operation, uh, has to stand, has to have a background of a ISO uh, 7 class, uh, a grade B environment as a background. Um, while an isolator uh, as a background, an isolator can sit in a ISO 8 or a class D environment or, or an ISO 7 class C environment because uh, it is uh, sealed. Interesting to say that uh, and to notice that uh, there, there are uh, closed wraps. I don't know, I know what is the difference between uh, a closed wraps and an isolator. There is no difference, it's just uh, the, the way you, you name it because of the difference in the validation approach. With, the, with the, an isolator, you have uh, the validation 
takes uh, um, several months because you have to make the validation of all biological uh, indicators, uh, hundred uh, of biological indicators, uh, different uh, cycle, cycle development takes months. While uh, with the RAPS, uh, as I told you, the RAPS is a kind of uh, enhanced clean room. You will uh, make the validation according to the standard of clean room. So you make a validation of the surface, cleaning surface, and the, um, the contamination of the surface uh, using uh, swaps, using contact plates, uh, um, and uh, this is much easier. So the time uh, to market, I would say, with the rubs uh, is uh, very short instead of the isolator. But the isolator has other advantage. The main advantage is environmental friendly because uh, uh, you don't need uh, all the, the background in a class uh, B or ISO 7. Consider that uh, a background of ISO 7 means that uh, at least uh, you should have uh, a coverage of uh, EPA filter about 30% of, the, of, the, of your ceiling. So a huge amount of air. And then also a big uh, impact in the gowning and the gowning of the people in terms of time. So to gown for a sterile area, it takes, uh, uh, if you come from an uh, unclassified area to, uh, up to the, uh, to the sterile area, could take more than half an hour to, uh, to have uh, all the steps to, uh, to, uh, to go into the sterile area. And then also the handling of all these uh, uh, sterile garments that uh, has to be treated, uh, maybe outsourced, the cost. So at the end of the story, uh, we made some balance uh, and we understood the, the difference between isolator and wraps. So the payback uh, happens more or less after uh, three years. So the isolator are more costly, but after three years, because of this environmental friendly, uh, we have a payback and you start to earn money if you go with an isolator solution. So uh, go back to the to our uh, project. So the project is uh, uh, we have uh, cax aluminum cax that you can see on the on the left side of my of this slide. Then we have stoppers and we have aluminum seals. So we uh, we have to bring all this material from outside from a class B environment into the wraps and uh, um, we have uh, to be sure that uh, no contamination will come uh, um, during this uh, transfer so uh, to avoid uh, any contamination uh, we are we we have uh, within a, a combi unit that combines uh, the a washing process and the sterilization process after this process uh, all this material is delivered into uh, the um, the wraps uh, and uh, in the buffer area because uh, the, um, the washing and sterilization process is a batch process so it lasts uh, more or less uh, one and a half hour and uh, you need uh, um, to, uh, to provide a kind of continuity to the filling process so first you run a couple of um, uh, cycle with the washing sterilization in order to fill the buffer area with uh, approximately 32 kegs two runs um the the system has been sized to run um, on a tower base on a shift and uh, on a shift uh, we can run th three batches of washing and sterilizing so the overall batch size is about 600 kilograms um, considering a, a, an approximate powder density of 0 0.5 kilograms per liter the volume of the kegs is 25 liters and uh, making some very simple calculation, the line output is uh, 12 kegs per hour. Uh, the line footprint uh, is about 60 square meter, about 600 square foot. Um, and uh, I would say that uh, the, the, the footprint uh, of the overall area already told uh, 60 square meter. Anyway, going uh, proceeding further, we um, we have um, integrated also in uh, in, uh, in the wraps uh, a material lock uh, providing a chemical uh, surface decontamination. This why uh, why we need this uh, this uh, material lock because we as we have to enter 
the bags for a final uh, um, wrapping of the uh, field uh, cakes. And also we need uh, to um, enter into the into the um, into the wraps uh, all the environmental monitoring stuff like uh, rodent plates or like swabs uh, and uh, contact plates to make uh, all the environmental monitoring biological environmental monitoring. Then we move to the AP dosing uh, station, API dosing station uh, where the powder has been dosed. And uh, afterwards, so we go to the uh, closing and sealing station. And uh, at the end of the process, uh, the, the cakes are uh, bag wrapped and then uh, downloaded in, into the uh, buffer area, the still on the wraps. So here um, you can have a, a much uh, a bright idea of uh, the, the system. It's, uh, with these 3D drawings. You have the, the first module with the washing and sterilizing unit. Uh, this, uh, it is a pressure vessel. This pressure vessel has a round shape uh, because this, uh, um, it is ideal for a washing cycle because uh, uh, we, uh, we can use part, uh, we can optimize the volume of the, of the round uh, um, configuration using the lower part as a collecting basin for, for the rinsing and, and the washing water and decide to, uh, to put uh, some uh, um, nozzle, rotating nozzle for, uh, uh, to, um, uh, to have a better coverage of all the material um, uh, under process. Then we have uh, uh, the, the module two, where uh, um, this, uh, uh, it is dedicated to the handling of the cart. It, there is an automatic uh, uh, downloading system of the cart, and we'll see in a short video afterwards. Then we have the three module that is uh, part of the um, buffer area. On the fourth module, you, you can uh, there is uh, um, the uh, those uh, the um, mixing and uh, um, uh, and the holding tank for uh, for the antibiotic powder, and the uh, number five uh, is the module for uh, the field and pack cakes unloading station. So uh, just uh, um, to um, have a feeling of the classification according to the European GMP as the customer is a European, but doesn't make a big difference also for US FDA. So we, we have the clean room that is the background environment that is in a grade B and ISO or ISO 7 environment, while the wraps is in a grade A or ISO 5 environment. Within the wraps, uh, we, um, we, we have designed the wraps with a new unidirectional airflow uh, to provide the best uh, um, protection of the critical uh, points, also on the airflow standpoint. Then uh, we have uh, uh, the, uh, well, the, the clear room uh, is uh, designed with the, uh, with the turbulent airflow. We have uh, almost 30% of the coverage with the EPA filter, with the filters uh, hold by the, by the ceiling of the clean room. So uh, let's go back to the washer sterilizer um, technology. This is something that we have developed uh, in the, since many years in Fedegari with the Compi machine. So we, uh, we have both the combi uh, with the process of uh, washing and sterilizing with the pressure vessel or just the washer. So both of them um, can be used, depends uh, what is the bio board, initial bio burden of uh, your uh, material, of the kegs. Uh, for sure, the, uh, the solution with the, um, in a, the combi solution with the washing and sterilizing it is very good to optimize the clean room space and to have a good space management. Also to reduce the routing of material to be cleaned. Uh, and the multipurpose machine, uh, it is very uh, interesting also 
um, as far as uh, concern uh, the uh, qualification because you have only one machine one controller but two process so the, the validation of the overall machine the validation time will be reduced about 30 percent because uh, many of uh, the um, of the controlling uh, system like for instance i make a very simple example password handling uh, you know it's the same uh, because we have only one machine so it doesn't matter if we are uh, running a, a washing cycle or a, sterilization, or a sterilization cycle. For what concerns the, um, the washer it, uh, no, with a no-pressure vessel, uh, we, uh, we're still using uh, the, the clean steam injected into the chamber. Uh, we use also the clean steam uh, to uh, heat up the, the, the cleaning water and rinsing water as we don't want to have uh, uh, any electric heaters inside uh, the, the chamber because electric heaters uh, sometimes uh, can, uh, can um, raise issues of um, you know, generating uh, some, uh, some um, problems. So it, if you can avoid uh, to heat with the heaters, uh, especially with the uh, purified water and uh, water for injection, it is better. And also um, the use of steam, it is uh, very important because of uh, the um, of the uh, detergent. So the power of steam means that the steam provides uh, an emollient effect on the soil. And this means that uh, I don't need to use too much uh, detergent uh, to, for the cleaning process. And uh, uh, also the steam uh, uh, give a, a kind of uh, disinfection. So we, uh, we can classify our uh, um, washer in a class A, uh, meaning that uh, with, um, with the disinfection we have validated uh, with the, uh, the A cycle. Um, then uh, um, using of uh, steam uh, provides a shorter uh, rinsing because we are using less detergent and uh, uh, this means a lower consumption of uh, water for injection or purified water that uh, these uh, fluids are extremely expensive because uh, uh, the, uh, the cost of uh, their generation of this fluid. At the end of the story, we are uh, uh, also reducing uh, the amount of energy and the cost of ownership. So with the use of steam, we can say that uh, the performance are highly improved. How it works, uh, uh, development of, of a washing cycle. So uh, what we are doing with uh, our customer, we get uh, uh, you know, it's a, uh, quite um, uh, customized everything. So we need to have the drawings uh, of the of the parts to be cleaned, or a physical part. Then uh, um, we need to make some studies about uh, the the soil type, and this uh, because uh, we need to, to understand uh, what is uh, the best detergent to be used with uh, the kind of soil that uh, uh, the process uh, has living on the surfaces. After this, uh, we develop uh, the, the, the recipe, the clean recipe, and, uh, and then uh, we run some cycle to uh, make the optimization of the, of the cycle and taking, keeping in mind the, the cleanliness target. Uh, to uh, check the cleanliness, uh, we uh, use uh, the um, um, an optical system that is the riboflavin uh, spray that is uh, dried on the surface to be cleaned and then with the wood lamp we check uh, we detect uh, the spots of riboflavin that eventually eventually were uh, were not uh, removed by by the process uh, so with this system uh, we are able to define the rinsing time that is necessary for uh, this kind of uh, uh, cleaning uh, cycle uh, and then afterwards uh, we have to uh, size the and to define the, the drying and the cooling 
Uh, one of the um, uh, advantages of a pressure vessel is that for drying and cooling, we can apply the, apply the vacuum. So we uh, make uh, the evaporation of the residual water because of the vacuum in chamber. And uh, of, of course, also uh, we heat the, the chamber as well with the jacket. Uh, uh, all the, um, during the process, the, uh, the cleanliness uh, uh, level is detected uh, by several uh, um, parameters like temperature, uh, air flow rate, time, and also very important conductivity of the water that is leaving the chamber. And uh, uh, in, on request, we can also add uh, a total organic uh, uh, content, uh, TOC, uh, that provide uh, uh, the efficiency of the, of the washing. Ooh, sorry. So here, um, a small video of uh, the downloading of the internal cart. So there is a shaft that enter inside the chamber. So no moving part inside the, the chamber uh, the, of the washer and sterilizer. All the movement are outside. So this uh, shaft and the hook pull the cart inside the wraps. We have also designed um, a, system, a swabbing system uh, to remove uh, the, um, the kegs uh, to help the operator because uh, you know working with the gloves is uh, not so friendly. So you need uh, something to um, improve uh, the, the handling uh, by the operator. Uh, so uh, now we are uh, on the dosing part. We we have uh, the upper part, of this vessel that holds uh, the API, the, the antibiotic powder. There is a stirrer inside, uh, and then uh, a penetration of a pipe that uh, goes straight uh, to the dosing point. Uh, the dosing happens. Uh, the uh, the kex is held on a on a scale in order to check the weight of uh, of the keg and of the powder uh, that has been dosed inside the keg. So uh, here you can see you have a cross section of the system. Um, on top you can see that there is a, a propeller inside uh, of the of this um, vessel in order uh, uh, to break uh, all the uh, um, you know the powder can make some conglomerates so you need uh, to break them and uh, also the lower part uh, of the of this uh, system uh, is vibrating and helping the the slippery of the of the powder uh, into the into the dosing uh, point. Just few um, words about our um, H2O2 biodecontamination material lock. We have developed this technology uh, by inside Fedegari. Uh, we have um, uh, designed our own uh, um, hydrogen peroxide generator. It is based uh, on a dosing pump and a heat plated that uh, vaporized the droplets of uh, hydrogen peroxide. And then through um, clean compressor air, this uh, airstream, uh, including the, the, the vapor of hydrogen peroxide, is delivered inside the chamber. Uh, the key point of this technology, we have developed a technology in which uh, we, we, we are working uh, the, the system on a feedback base. So we have a detector of high concentration hydrogen peroxide. Uh, this detector um, measures the concentration inside the chamber of uh, hydrogen peroxide, send the signal to the controller, to the TEMA for process controller. The controller check the set point and according to the set point, uh, adjust the strokes of the dosing pulp 
pump that is uh, uh, on board of the vaporizer. So we are able uh, to uh, have um, uh, an excellent control of the concentration inside the, the chamber with uh, plus minus uh, 20 ppm. The advantage of this technology is also that um, we, um, we, we, uh, we have no issues with uh, the variation, vari variation of the product that, uh, you know, plastic product that we are introducing the material uh, airlock, for instance, uh, plastic film are not the same. Uh, so if uh, one uh, plastic film is more absorptive than another, then uh, the system self adjust and you are not to revalidate uh, all the process because it keeps stable the uh, concentration inside the channel. Uh, all the um, all the rub system uh, is monitored. Uh, so we uh, we, this, we we have decided uh, according to a risk assessment uh, helps to define what are the critical control points uh, where the sampling uh, um, has been uh, need to be located um, and to keep uh, under control um, the wraps. So the parameter that we are measuring is temperature relative uh, humidity. These two parameters, um, uh, we just uh, make a reading, not controlling, because uh, uh, the controlling of temperature and relative humidity is provided by a centralized HVAC system of the clean room, of the background clean room. Um, we are uh, checking the air velocity here. You can see uh, an air velocity probe, hot wire air velocity probe, uh, in order to be sure that unidirectional uh, airflow is uh, working properly. Then we have non-viable particle counting. In this case, uh, uh, it is during the validation, we have uh, an independent uh, particle counter, but we have probes uh, uh, in the critical uh, control points and also active and passive viable particle monitoring. So all the parameters are, that are required to classify and to validate a, a clean room and the unidirectional flow are in position. Uh, here we have some view, some uh, nice view of the um, of the system. This is the, the the door of the material lock, the opening. Um, in this case, is closed. What is important to say that we have developed a, a gasket system, an inflatable gasket, to be sure that no leaks of hydrogen peroxide happens during the process outside the, the chamber. And then also um, the dosing uh, area of the wraps uh, is separated by doors uh, to be sure that uh, um, no um, powder goes in the other part uh, of uh, of the um, of the wraps. Other some others uh, um, photos. The, these photos are were taken in our uh, factory um, asset and test uh, bay area. So what sets us apart? I would say that um, this project has a kind of uncon unconventional approach because uh, uh, we, we have not just uh, uh, delivered uh, units, but we delivered the complete system with the integration of different technologies that are uh, uh, manufacture, design and manufacturing in Fedegari, and then integrated by the RAPS that uh, also is uh, manufactured in uh, design and manufacturing in Fedegari. The only thing that we, we do not uh, uh, design and manufacture is the dosing that is uh, from the market. As I told you before, uh, uh, I want to emphasize the um, uh, hydrogen peroxide and the, the cycle. Uh, um, system that we have developed uh, according to the concentration inside the chamber. Also important, um, we, um, we, we have uh, a lot of flexibility in, um, in designing the internal cart of the washing uh, um, unit. And uh, um, so we, uh, we are completely flexible to uh, to uh, the customer requirements, and uh, we are um, ready to suggest some solution. We have, uh, you know, during uh, the year, we have developed a lot of experience and we are uh, capable to, uh, 
to provide good suggestion uh, for uh, to solve some uh, problem that uh, uh, we faced in the in the past. So uh, at the end, uh, just a few words about our controller. Our controller is uh, pre-validated and uh, with the native GAMP5 compliance, 21 CFR Part 11, also compliant. Um, it is an open system architecture. We are using uh, COTS uh, hardware, so hardware from the shelf. In case of uh, US uh, installation, we are using Allen Bradley. Um, and also important to say that uh, we are working uh, on a phase group basis. So the the, uh, the process is divided in phase group, in phase group, and uh, these phase groups can be arranged in, uh, with a different uh, configuration. And um, uh, because uh, all these phase groups are uh, pre-validated uh, by our software house, uh, you don't need to revalidate uh, all your process uh, uh, if you change something. Uh, in um, in the control system i finish now thank you for your attention and uh, i'm ready for uh, for some uh, question before we get to the questions i kind of um skipped a slide when before sergio started talking i kind of turned it over to him and i didn't really introduce sergio and give some background so now that you've heard him i'd like to brag about him a little bit. I was just so anxious to hear his presentation that I kind of skipped over that part. But um, Sergio began working with Fedigari in 2010. Prior to that, in the early 80s, Sergio got his master's in chemical engineering and has been involved with aseptic environments and technologies ever since. Early in his career, he specialized in clean room HVAC design and engineering, becoming an engineering manager in that area. In 1995, Sergio founded Biocom, his company focused on the design, development, and production of pharmaceutical production grade clean rooms and related technologies, including the development of a line of chemical decontamination systems. In 2010, his company was acquired by Fedigari Technologies, where Sergio is now responsible for advanced aseptic manufacturing technologies. He's been a board member of the Association of Contamination Control, which is ASCCA, since 1986, including its past president and vice president, and has been highly involved with the PDA and regulators of the FDA in the EU. Some of his papers, course, and pre presentations include the ASCCA training course on general introduction of clean room technology, isolation concepts, and critical parameter definition, training on pharmaceutical HVAC design at LAS, I'm not sure how to say that, Sergio, La Sapienza University for Students of Chemical and Pharmaceutical Technology. So he presentation for the PDA and published by Pharmaceutical Online and Globalist Robotic Technologies and Aseptic Manufacturing for Personalized Cytotoxic Drugs. So Sergio's very well versed in a lot of different things and, and we'd actually like to um, you know, if you need any information on any other thing that uh, he's an expert on, we'd be glad to help you out with that too. So I'm sorry I skipped that at the beginning of the presentation, but I wanted to get that in just to kind of let you know um, all the accomplishments that Sergio's had, um, you know, prior to uh, this presentation. So let's go on and see if there's any questions we can discuss now. Marco, did you have any questions on YouTube? No, not for not from today. The Maybe ones I, I can uh, accumulated thus far were delivered to Sergio via email. Okay. So yeah. An account. Okay. Maybe I have some questions here received uh, before start we started the the presentation. Maybe we can give um, just a quick feedback to to these questions. Okay. Good. So there is a first question uh, saying that what is the minimum required area for such a, a build and does the room has to be externally vented? So um, according to my presentation, I, I was saying uh, 
the footprint uh, it's about uh, 60 square meter for this uh, kind of installation and then uh, this uh, wraps has to sit uh, in a ISO 7 grade B environment so it is uh, required to have a clean room outside as we are working in a wraps so the second question is can such an unconventional build uh, be FDA tested and approved uh, I would say yes without uh, you know any problem is a strong word but uh, in any case uh, I would say that uh, no no fear to be approved by FDA inspectors because we are uh, we are uh, classifying a class a grade A environment or ISO 5 uh, um, room for uh, uh, wraps for sterile application and the background of ISO 7. And uh, also we have set all the uh, environmental monitoring parameters that are required to uh, check and guarantee that uh, the sterility of, uh, of the system. Then uh, there is another question. Uh, what would be the cycle runtime from start to finish uh, with the design as uh, is? And this uh, was uh, uh, answered in, uh, in the slides, uh, um, I think in the third or fourth slides. So it is written in, in the presentation, so you can go back to this. Can we utilize an automatic filling and doses machine in such a design or it would be a, a compliance issue? No problem, as I told you, Fedegari is uh, very flexible, so uh, we can um, use uh, any kind of uh, automatic or filling and dosing machine. Uh, of course, we have uh, to make uh, to build up the wraps uh, around it. Uh, so we uh, there, there is a kind of co-design required between uh, the <laughs> engineers and uh, customer engineers. Um, the, then the, we have uh, the last uh, question: What is uh, the maintenance and regular cleaning and checks like? Uh, does it require a significant downtime, especially when handling uh, uh, different formulas? So the key point is uh, uh, to um, design a dosing system that is uh, uh, more close as possible in order to um, uh, minimize the spread of powder outside the kegs. And this, uh, there are solutions for that, and then we can discuss about this solution. Um, then also the the dosing area is separated by the other part of the wraps by doors. So in order to, to keep uh, eventually uh, the spills of powder in uh, localizing a certain area. And also the design of uh, the machine is uh, uh, an easy to clean uh, uh, machine design. But of course it takes uh, uh, some time so to clean. Maybe I think uh, good cleaning uh, you can uh, expect uh, about uh, uh, Three four hours, uh, especially in case if you uh, if you have to switch to one product to another to avoid uh, um, um, cross contamination. And one one of the um, the uh, point uh, um, with the cleaning is to, that you have to wait for the results of the cleaning validation. So uh, this uh, can create um, some uh, some time some downtime. Okay, I think uh, that with this uh, last question, uh, um, I would say that uh, I have finished. I hope to, um, to enjoy some, uh, some um, uh, connection, some um, other question from, uh, from you guys and uh, have a nice morning. Great, thank you so much Sergio for giving us the opportunity to better understand uh, this integrated project done by Fedegari at Sandoz. Um, Fedegari is a company with significant infrastructure in the United States to support its operations here. They're, they've installed equipment, a showroom in Pennsylvania. They have product development laboratory, training and service center, and it has better infrastructure domestically than even most of the local manufacturers here. So if anybody needs additional information relative to Fedegari, the product line, anything that Sergio discussed, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, you know, send us any questions, send us an email, and we'd be happy to, um, you know, have a private conversation with you, discuss anything, and get Sergio back on the line if need be. So um, 
Thank you all very much. I just want to also let you know that our next Lunch and Learn in this series will be presented by Mesa Labs featuring Gabor Zakas, who will deliver some insights on Mesa's torque testers for pharmaceutical manufacturing and the way these torque testers assure compliance with the FDA's CFR 21 Part 11 compliance. Um, if a topic interests you, please also come back on the 21st. You can uh, look at this one, or like I said, the rest of our series are online that you can look at them anytime. So again, thank you very much, Sergio, for taking the time to um, uh, teach us here today and all of you who attended. I hope you found it beneficial and we will hopefully talk to you all again next month. Thank you. Thank you.